will help increase your flexibility, heighten self-esteem, and add to your physical well-being. Unlike many other dance forms, this dance is for women of all sizes, ages, and shapes. Whether dancing for yourself, your family, friends, or professionally, this beautiful dance exercise appeals to women from all over the world because of its unique capability to allow each woman's specialness to shine through. Even though we tend to call this dance by the commercial term belly dance, this is not a dance of a body part like the abdomen as much as it is a dance of the total body. The dance is super exercised for the legs, waist, arms, neck, thighs, upper and lower back, the spine, as well as abdominals. It is helpful for alleviating arthritis, lower back problems, correcting posture, and especially in developing confidence and self-esteem. As with all exercise programs, please check with your physician first. This video has been made not to replace a studio teacher, but to augment your weekly classes and to give you a very general basic idea of the fundamentals of this dance. I'm being assisted on this video by some of my students. They want me to assure you that they are novices and in a couple of cases have only had three or four lessons. We thought you would appreciate the different levels of expertise and relate better to the skills involved. Practice and review these basic moves until they become second nature. Freedom to improvise these basic steps is the goal. Learn to tap into ancient rhythmical motion and learn also of the direct communication between body, mind, and spirit. Learn to dance from your soul. Shall we begin? It is helpful in creating movement to develop a sense of an inverted pyramid. Knees and feet in parallel. Knees are loose to allow a free earthbound quality. In elegant contrast, the upper body should always be lifted with an easy carriage in the torso, head, and arms. Without correct alignment, the most basic movements cannot be executed, so practice these until they become natural. Before we can start learning how to belly dance, we have to have the proper oriental posture. So this is the neutral position for the body before you actually start a dance movement. Shali and Angela will demonstrate proper oriental posture. First of all, starting with the feet, the feet are typically about six inches apart. The knees are directly over the feet. They don't collapse in and they don't stretch out to the side. The pelvic area is tucked under. The stomach muscles, the abdominal muscles are engaged. Now the chest is lifted away from the hips. You want to take a deep breath. Now exhale, but keep the chest there. The arms are lifted as if you're placing them on a shelf. The fingers are extended, nice energy. The shoulders will be down, right? The elbows facing the back of the room. The chin is up, so you have a nice elevated carriage here. Keep the knees nice and soft. That's great. And now I want to demonstrate what not to do. Okay, Beth here is going to show you a little modified version of what not to do. Okay, what's wrong with those feet? The toes have to point forward, please. The knees forward. The hip area has to tuck under, right? The chest lifts up. The shoulders are down, and she becomes a glorious creature. Okay, go ahead and lift the arms off to the side, right? This is her neutral starting oriental dance posture. Okay, excuse me, Beth, please. <laughs> Very beautiful. Jean here is also giving us a good demonstration of what not to do. Okay, Jean, your feet need to be a few inches closer together, right? Nice grounded position. The knees are soft. The hips, again, are tucked under. Lift the ribcage up. No chicken wings, please. The elbows go to the back of 
not so high, to the back of the room, extend it through here. Right, nice, chin is up, chest is lifted, and this will become a very normal posture after you do it about five or six hundred or thousand times. Okay, one more time, all together here. We're all facing front a little bit. Again, grounded with the feet, knees are soft. Take the hips and tuck under, engage the stomach muscles, lift the chest, shoulders are down, really open through this chakra area here. Elbows to the back of the room, fingertips are extended, chin up. This is our starting position. A lot of times when we take a pose and dance, we'll take it to a diagonal here or a diagonal here. But as we start to learn to dance, we're going to start straight forward, usually getting ready to step off with the right foot. The flow of movement is from the center outward, from the hips up the torso and out the arms and fingertips. Have a sense of giving and reaching out. Beautifully elevated arms are necessary for framing your hip work, but remember to keep them isolated and quiet away from heavy hip movement. Let's begin with basic arm position. This is a neutral dance position. Most of the steps start with the arms in this position. Make sure the arms are nice and elevated, the chest is nice and lifted, the shoulders, pull them down away from the ear, the elbows to the back of the room, the fingers tend to point towards the corners of the room, not the sides, not the walls, but the corners of the room so your arms will be rounded. Make sure that you don't have a limp wrist and make sure that your fingers also are nice and strong. Uh, I tend to have the middle finger a little bit lower than the others. These are my finger symbol playing fingers. From here, I'm going to show you some basic um, arm designs. We're going to go into a right angle arm and then on the other side. Let me turn around so that you can see it from the back and we'll practice it together. Raise the right arm by your ear and the left arm is extended out to the side. You can put a little hip roll into it. The arm above here, the hand can actually be facing this side or this side. Try to avoid the palm facing forward towards your audience, or in this case, the curtain. Try it again. Try this right angle arm on the other side. The hand can be facing in or out. Good. Another arm design would be the half lotus. One arm by the temple and the other arm is diagonally stretched out. It's a nice lift here. Again, watch it with the little hip roll. Try the other side. Let's look at it from the back. The right arm by the temple and the left arm is lifted. No break in the elbow here. Make sure it's a nice, strong arm. Other side. Good. I like this movement. It's a very feminine movement. It's an S-shaped arm. Here's your S. But I take it out to the side a little bit. Lean into it just a dab. And just hold that and you frame your hip movement with that lower arm. Step down, go into your other pose, other side. Let's look at it from the back. S shape arm here and here. And roll that left hip. Make sure that that left elbow is not here, it's not collapsed, it has a nice lift. Try the other side. The last arm movement is the snake arm. Um, the snake arm, we'll just take it in the right arm first, and I want you to pretend that your fingers are like a paintbrush, and you're painting that side wall. It's a nice slow movement. The arm is out to the side of the body. And after a while, you notice that you're leading, actually, with that elbow. The elbow leads up, and the elbow drops down. 
applying it on the other side. Lift and drop. Again, painting that wall. And then from the front, you're going to be alternating right side and then the left side. Lift on the right and left. Let me turn around. That'll be a little bit easier for you. Then my right will be your right. Lifting with the right side and the left. It gets a little tricky here because you're doing two arm movements, two sides at the same time. Keep painting those walls. The percussive rhythm of the music or the bottom line, usually the drums, is demonstrated typically by the hips. Practice these hip movements, but keep the upper body isolated, quiet, away from your hip work. So now let's do happy hips. The most basic of hip movements is a hip lift or a hip drop. So I'm going to show you most of these movements in this section with my back towards you so that you can get a better idea of the logistics. Go ahead and put your weight on the left leg here, a nice soft knee, do not lock that knee back. Take that right foot and just prop it for a second there. This hip will twist and come forward and back. It's lifting front and back. A little bit faster, up and down. Up, down, hip, lift. Lifting up, lifting up. Try the other side. Put the weight on the right foot, a soft knee. Let's work that left hip forward and back. Here it's forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. A nice and easy hip twist here. Arms are elevated, and keep the arms quiet. Don't let them get too much action in there. It's an isolated hip movement here. We're going to alternate it into what I call a basic Egyptian. You're going to do a left hip, step, right hip, step. Left, step, right side, step. Let me face you so you can see what it looks like from the front. Right, left. I'm adding Egyptian arms, nice and high, pushing towards forward towards the audience here. Basic Egyptian. Again from the back. And our next basic movement is called piston hips. Piston hips are alternating right underneath a rib cage. My knees are very soft and the hips, my hip bones are pushing up towards my armpits Make sure that the hips do not push out towards the walls. So it's just lift, lift, lift. And notice that my knees never go all the way back. Right, left, right, left. Let me turn around. Right hip first. Up, 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 seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now if you take piston hips and speed it up a little bit, it goes into a nice, soft hip shimmy. Again, my knees stay very soft. This movement is actually coming from the knees up into my hips. I don't have any special hip muscles to make this happen. It's from the knees. My weight is on my heels. My pelvic area is tucked under. And I go into a little shimmy here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And as you get better at this, you can shift the weight. On the right foot, press left. And back to pistons. Basic Egyptian. And just a one-sided hip lift. Other side. And back to shimmies. The music will sometimes tell you to whirl, twirl, and travel around using your full dance space. These three steps can be used in combination. 
Under super steps, we have three steps in this category. The first one I'm going to show you today is called basic Arabic. It's a four count step leading off with the right foot. I'll turn around so you can see it better. Leading off with the right foot on count one and forward, step, back, step. What's happening here is you're just rocking forward. And you can accent count one. Here is one, two, three, four, accent one, two, three, four, basic Arabic forward, back. For the more advanced students, you could add a little shimmy to it. Or just keep it simple. Leading off with the left foot, the same thing. Count forward and back. Left foot forward, left foot back. Left foot forward, left foot back. With a little shimmy. Looking at it from the front, forward, step, back, step, forward, step, back, step, forward, step, back, step, or the left side, forward, back. If you want to add some arms, bring them in front, and just frame the hip, in front of the hip, to the side of the hip, to the backs of the hands, and to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, front, back. Step forward and back. With the right foot. And you can speed it up a little bit. It's forward, back, and forward, back. Forward, back, forward, back. Going into a side to side traveling step, and these steps will help you travel around your stage, whether it's in your living room or on the big Carnegie Hall here. So this step is called Arabesque. And it starts on the right foot and it travels to that direction. It's forward, side, forward, lift, forward, side, forward, lift. If you have a big, large skirt on, you'd have a nice skirt flourish here. And I'll turn around so you can see it from the back. Again, the right foot starts and it crosses over in front of the left. Five, six, seven, eight. Forward, side, forward, lift, forward, side, forward, lift. As you lift that leg back here, make sure you use this muscle here. Forward, side, forward, lift. Be careful that your knee comes from the back to the front. Arms are elevated. Now that we have that one figured out, let's go to the third step, and that one's called a grapevine step. This step will help you go around in a circle and filling up the stage. So again, it's all my steps I always start with the right foot. So it's going to be forward, side, back, side, right foot in front, right foot behind. Front, side, back, side, forward, side, and back. There's a little bit of a hip twist here, and the shoulders stay pulled back away from it. So your body is in opposition, your upper body is in opposition here. A little bit faster, smaller steps, I'm on the balls of my feet. regular time.
Circular movements help to soften the dance in a feminine way. A smooth transition from one body circle to another gives a dance a lyrical form. These circles are often done to slow, mesmerizing music called taksim or improvisation. We're going to do a series of circle movements now, starting with the top of the body and traveling downward. First of all, let's go ahead and do some head circles. It'll be easier for you if you lift your arms and press the hands a little bit lightly together here, and take the head and practice the sliding side to side first. This one will be a lot easier if you practice in front of the mirror. And imagine that there's a line down the center of your face. That line cannot tilt. The chin doesn't tilt. It all stays straight across. And when you're doing this side to side slide here, you're only actually traveling about an inch to the side. Feel that your ears are going towards the inside of your arms. The other part of the head circle will be to push the head forward and back. Go ahead, push it forward and back, forward and back. So what's going to happen is we'll combine all those movements. You're going to take the head forward, side, back, and side. Forward, side, back, and side. Front, side, back. And then you'll smooth it out, one continuous circle motion here. After you've practiced that for a while, you're going to go ahead and start practicing with torso circles. It's the same concept. Hold on to the hips. Make sure the hips don't get in any action here. It's just the ribs side to side. Go ahead and slide them to one side and then the other. Check in the mirror or have your teacher check that your shoulders do not drop. Everything stays straight across. One side and then the other. Some students like to sit in the car, hold on to the steering wheel and practice this while they're at the stoplight, not while they're driving. This way you know that you're sitting on your hips and your hips can't move. Take the same rib cage and we're going to push it forward and back. Forward and back. Pull the ribs forward and back. And combination forward, side, back, and side. Push front side, back, side, forward, side, back, side. From the back it looks like this. Forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side. Go ahead and smooth it out. Good. Now I want to show you hip circles. The hips go into a nice big round circle. Feel that you're inside of a big beer barrel and the hips touch all the sides, all the way around. Be careful that the legs or your feet are not too far apart. You don't want to go into this stance. Keep the legs slightly together, about six inches apart. It's a nice movement here. Let me turn around and show it to you from the back. The hips push side, back, side, and front side, back, side, and forward. Smooth it out. This is a very good dance movement and also good exercise for the lower back. As you push the hips to the back, make sure you pull in your stomach muscles hard at the same time. Again, from the front, it looks like this. Good. Usually dancers go from a hip circle into a figure eight. Let me show it to you from the back. Here's your hip circle. And then we slide into a nice figure eight with the hips. 
Let me give you the breakdown to figure eight hips here. This is corner one back here. This is corner two, corner three, and corner four. Take that right hip and push it back towards corner one. Swing it forward to corner two. Shift the weight over to corner three. Swing it forward to four. Shift the weight back to one. Here is two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back, front, back, front. Nice and smooth and forward back and forward. Check to make sure that your upper body is not involved in the movement. Otherwise, you're just going to look like a big airplane if your arms are going with your hips. The hips are away from the arms. Nice twist here. I'm going to turn around so you can see it from the front. Back, front, back. Front, back, front, back, front, and smooth it out. Camel undulation represents the flow of energy through the total length of the spine. Later you can learn to travel with it or reverse the undulation from the bottom up. This next movement is the favorite movement of many dancers. It's called a camel or an undulation. It, um, it sometimes looks like it's an abdominal movement. When people see this movement from the front, they think it's stomach work, but actually it's spine work. You're working your spine from the top all the way down to your tailbone. Again, it's called the camel and it looks like this. So the breakdown to this movement, let's start with the feet. One foot is slightly in front of the other. You're going to have the weight forward and then you rock the weight back. Your weight will be forward at least two counts and then back two counts. As you travel up in the movement into the chest, the chest goes forward on the count on count one. It lifts up on count two. Go back to that back leg, switch your weight, contract. Feel that somebody's pushing through the sternum right here in contraction right here. Stepping forward with the chest, the footwork, up, lean back, and contract. So the count will be forward is one, lift on two, lean back on three, contract on four. One, two, lean back, contract, forward, lift, lean back, contract. Now notice as I go forward that there's a C shape in my spine back here. My back is arched at this point. As I come back and lean back and I push down through my sternum, I have a C shape right here. So it just goes to the other side. Come forward and lean back working hard, each vertebrae rolls all the way down to the spine right here. And forward, lift, lean back, contract. Forward, lift the chest, lean back, and contract through. Now this is one of the most difficult movements that we have in Middle Eastern dance. Let me give you an exercise that'll help you get a more limber spine. I want you to find an, a wall and then just stand away from that wall. Here's my wall, my imaginary wall. Stand away from that wall about six inches. And you're going to lean back. This bone in your neck, the cervical vertebrae, will be touching the wall. And then concentrate really hard. Have somebody watch and spot you that each vertebrae starts to go against that wall all the way down. Now when you get into the lumbar position here, make sure that you don't have this curvature here and that, that this is touching the wall. You really want to tuck hard, and at one point, the whole back will be flat against the wall. And then you release it, you come forward, lean back against the wall, roll each vertebrae down the wall, one at a time. Again, really a hard contraction here, and forward. Lean back, contract, 
forward of the chest, lift the chest, lean back, and contract. If you do this about four or 5,000 times, you'll have this down, down real pat. It takes a long time to figure it out. Practice it very slowly at first, and then you'll be doing beautiful undulations. Maybe you want to travel around with it in a little circle. Forward, lift, lean back, contract. Forward, lift, lean back, contract. Tu 
Treasure of the Nile, you're a still a mystery, and the place I dream of. Your gentle winds embrace me with a touch of sensation, and my heart surrenders. An ocean of love. This is one of the oldest known dances. Throughout history, this dance has been called by many different names, such as Oriental Dance, Rock Sharky. Birth dance, danse de ventre, earth dance, danse oriental, bauch dance, the goddess dance, gypsy, Arabic, Egyptian, Middle Eastern, Turkish, and Belody. The dance's origins are as complex as an Arabic mosaic design on an oriental carpet, from fertility rituals connecting to nature, as early childbirthing exercises, to honoring female deities that reigned over life cycles to slave markets and harems, to honoring the goddess Astarte and Isis, this dance has existed in many countries for many different reasons over a very long time. Yet much of what we know today about the dance comes from descriptions of Europeans traveling in Egypt during the last century. It was from these descriptions of public and professional dancers that the term belly dance first came into common use. From the 19th to the early 20th century, professional dancers in Egypt were called either Gawazi or Awalim. The Gawazi and Awalim were usually gypsies. In the early 1900s, Ruth St. Denis, an American, added her interpretation of Oriental dance to the art world, as well as the grand lady of ethnic dance, La Mary. Here she is costumed for Shatat El Salab, an Arabic dance, circa 1946. In 1926, a nightclub called Casino Opera was opened in Cairo by Lebanese actress named Badia Masabni. It was fashioned after European cabarets. Dancers now needed to adjust their dance style to include larger movements to accommodate the spacious stage, and it was at this time that the use of veils was added. Another innovation was the use of two-piece costumes with chiffon and sequins. Two dancers, Tahaya Karioka and Samia Gamal, were discovered as chorus girls in Badia Masabni's casino and went on to become well-respected dancers. Tahaya Karioka, foremost Middle Eastern dancer during the days of King Farouk, said of the belly dancer, she must express life, death, happiness, sorrow, love, and anger, but above all, she must have dignity. Samia Gamal, pet dancer of Farouk and the second wife of Shepherd King, scion of a Texas oil family, introduced wearing high-heeled shoes versus dancing barefoot.
Naima Akef was also a big name at this time. She came from a circus family and most unusual for this time was actually encouraged by her family to dance. Her dance talent led her into a career in movies. Naga Fuad, Soher Saki, Aza Sharif added their own innovations, providing inspiration for today's dancers. Here are some clips of these famous ladies. Belly dancing was introduced to America in 1893 at the Chicago World's Fair. Conservative Victorian minds saw the undulating dance of the famous Little Egypt and decided to call it the Hoochie Coochie. Today, the most commonly used term is belly dancing. Middle Eastern women have always gotten together for special occasions to sing, clap, play drums, talk, and of course, dance for each other in a healthy expression of joy and sensuality confirming the power of sisterhood and womanhood. Today, Middle Eastern dance is performed in festivals, theaters, restaurants, nightclubs, dance studios, parties, creative anachronism societies, weddings, natural settings, and in cabarets all over the world. Here I am in performance doing a mix of Arabic musical strains with Moorish influence. Enjoy the musicians, Hitano and the Desert Prophets at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, Albuquerque, New Mexico in the summer of 1995.
Thank you.